untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at a red black sacrifice deck updated with Dominaria United, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're trying out two copies of Weather Light Completed, the new 2 mana 5 5 Mythic Rare Legendary Artifact Vehicle with Flying. Although you may notice there's no crew cost on Weather Light Completed, so how do we turn it into a creature? Well, as long as it has four or more of these special Phyrexian counters on it, it turns into a Phyrexian creature in addition to its other types, and how how do we get the counters on Weatherlight? Whenever a creature we control dies, we can put one of those counters on it. And then we get to also draw a card if it has seven or more counters on it. If not, we get to scry one. So either way we get to scry one whenever one of our creatures dies, which is helpful in finding the missing tools we need. And then once it gets four counters it turns into a creature. Starting from seven counters it actually acts as a card draw engine if the opponent cannot get rid of it. So this is perfect in a deck playing with Oni Cult Anvil, which is a great way to repeat sacrifice our artifact creatures and turn them into 1-1 construct tokens while draining the opponent. Then we also have two copies of Braids as another new addition from Dominaria, a 3-3 a legendary nightmare, saying at the beginning of your end step you may sacrifice an artifact, creature, enchantment, land or planeswalker, and if you do each opponent may sacrifice a permanent that shares a card type with it, and for each opponent who doesn't that player loses two life and you draw a card. So Braids is excellent in a deck that can produce a lot of small artifacts that we don't really mind sacrificing, the opponent's unlikely to control a lot of artifacts they want to get rid of, so we essentially get to drain the opponent for two and draw a card in the process, maybe even enabling a card like Anvil at the same time. So those are the two big additions from Dominaria, and then of course we also picked up the Sulphurous Springs in the mana base. Then the rest of our deck is mostly the same, Anvil is the main engine card, plays very well with blood tokens as well, and we've got Epicure at one mana making a blood token and dealing one damage to the opponent, as well as the full set of Harvester, which also makes a blood token, can apply some pressure, and can also be used as a removal. Also great combo with a reflection of Kiki Jiki, once we transform a Fable of the Mirror Breaker, copying our Harvester results in a lot of damage and a lot of dead opposing creatures. And then the second chapter also gives us a nice bit of card selection to help us find Anvil, and the Shaman token making treasures also synergizes very nicely with Anvil and the other cards in our deck. Our main spot removal spell of choice here is Voltage Surge, which can deal 4 damage if we sacrifice an artifact, otherwise 2 damage for just 1 mana. And then we complement it with 2 copies of Infernal Grasp to deal with some of the bigger creatures like maybe Shieldred, which can survive 4 damage. Then we've got a bit of card draw with a Reckoner's Bargain, which is our replacement for Deadly Dispute, which was of course the better card, but now that rotation happened, we no longer have Deadly Dispute and Standard, so Bargain will have to do, can still sacrifice artifacts or creatures to draw to, gaining some life in the process. And then we're still playing two copies of Underdog as a nice late game mana sink, thanks to Blitz letting us replay it out of the graveyard and drawing a card in the process. And then both Underdog and Harvester are also great at enabling a turn 3 Obnixilis with Casualty, as we can now sacrifice a 3 powered creature. So then the token that's a copy of Obnixilis will also enter the battlefield with 3 loyalty on it, so we can potentially minus 2 both, making a pair of 1 1 Devil tokens that when they die deal 1 damage. If not, we're still happy to sacrifice a random 1 1 token, like the one from Anvil or maybe an Epicure to make an extra copy of Obnixilis, which will then start plussing to drain the opponent while gaining life if we control a demon or devil. And then we're also playing four copies of Synthesizer, another important tool in this deck, which will exile the top card of our library when it enters, and then we get to play that card until the end of our turn. So we typically don't want to play Synthesizer on turn one, instead maybe wait until turn three, turn four, so we can play Synthesizer, exile our top card, if it's a land we can play it, and if it's a non-land we'll have the mana to cast it, so we don't lose out on any value, and we can do the same when we sacrifice Synthesizer, so it can provide a ton of value alongside our anvil, and then we typically don't really end up making the 2-2 Samurai, since we can just sacrifice it to a different ability instead. And then we also have two copies of the Meat Hook Massacre, as a nice sweeper in the more aggressive matchups, can gain us some life back, but can also drain the opponent in conjunction with our other sacrifice effects like Anvil, so it's still great in other matchups as well. Can always play it for X equals zero if we just want to get the enchantment in play. And then our mana base also includes Crucible of Defiance and Abandoned Mire, which can be channeled to provide a bit of extra value. And we even have Braids and Weatherlight completed once it turns into a creature to give those a discount as well. 
Now I did also consider adding Lagomus to the deck at 3 mana, as it can make 2-1 elemental tokens with haste, great for pressuring opposing planeswalkers, and then we don't mind sacrificing the elemental to our various effects, as it will die end of turn anyways, so great synergy with braids as well, but I ended up with too many other powerful 3-drops like Fable and Omnixilus that I wanted to include instead, but definitely worth experimenting with. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Turn 2 Harvester. Turn 3, if we don't hit our land drop, we could maybe bargain to go looking for one. Otherwise, Weatherlight completed. Can also start scrying as our creatures die. Turn 1 Swamp. Ooh, and an Anvil. I think I still like Harvester first, but then next turn we could maybe get the Anvil going, sacking our Blood Token. Step 1, attack. And then Anvil also great alongside our Weatherlight, as we can quickly amass counters on it. 3 mana for Liliana, can easily sack her 1-1 token now. No more distractions. Now that will make it harder to get the Anvil going again, although we'll eventually get some treasures from uh, Fable. Although it's actually somewhat tempting to still get rid of Harvester, keep the 1-1, kill Liliana with it, and then we've got something to go with Anvil. Yeah, actually, let's keep the artifact token. Alright, Apicure also gives us potential uh, artifacts to sacrifice, but uh, we'll try this. Alternatively, I could have started to uh, draw with a bargain instead. Don't need another weather light. And Mono Black struggles to deal with artifacts. Shieldred's annoying. But we've got Infernal Grasp to answer it. And uh, yeah, I should probably just kill it now. Should have put a stop on upkeep so I could have killed Shieldred before our opponent uh, triggered it in our draw step. For now, we can attack for one. And then next turn, I'll bargain, probably. Keep land on top. I guess we'll just be able to Fable then. Massacre for one, just to kill our token. So Weather Light's close to being a creature. Could also play Epicure and then still Bargain, as well as get Anvil going. And then if I bargain now, I can attack with Weather Lights. Don't need another Epicure. And attack for five. Opponent's already down to eight. Don't expect our Weather Light to stick around for long, but at least we still have our Anvil as a nice engine card. And our opponent scoops it up. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Gonna hang on to Synthesizer for a little bit, so we can get immediate value instead of wasting the card we exile. Turn 2 Harvester, turn 3 Fable is a nice start. Opponent Blue-Black. Tribute kills our Harvester. And then next turn might be a good time for Synthesizer. Braids is good too. So I'll discard a Mountain, I think I'm happy keeping the other. Or we can discard both since we're pretty likely to draw land. Alright, let's go Synthesizer, hope to exile a land with it. And then I can still play an Anvil as well. That's awkward, we found a Fable, 
which I can't cast. Well, I guess we'll give up on uh, Fable here, still play Anvil, and sack our blood token to get it going. Didn't have too many 3-drops left in the deck for us to exile with a Synthesizer, so that's too bad. But at least we've got another one, so plenty of artifacts to sacrifice to Anvil as our opponent goes digging with Impulse. And another one. Okay, so the coast might be clear for Braids as well. Although if I sacrifice Synthesizer to Braids, I won't have time to cast the spell from Exile, unless it's an instant. So, there may be a better approach to this. So, maybe just sack Synthesizer to Anvil. And then, can always sacrifice an artifact token to Braids as well, since we can easily make more. Alright, land is good. So, I'll just play Braids. And sacrifice token end of turn. Which will drain the opponent and draw a card. Opponent kills Braids at the cost of two life. And a reflection as well. Plenty of spot removal, but Anvil is going to be difficult for Blue Black to deal with. Try another Synthesizer. Finding Obnixilis. Okay. I would like to cast it with Casualty if possible. So I guess that means sacking Synthesizer to Anvil here to make a token. And hope to exile a land so we don't waste any value. Voltage Surge. Okay. I guess uh, play this with Casualty. And we'll make a token, and then plus. So the cards we exiled with Synthesizer could have been slightly better, but uh, we're still in a commanding position here. Fading Hope, Bouncing our Devil, that's fine, not gonna Voltage Surge in response, even though that would deal one damage on the way out. And an Epicure, another way to enable Anvil. And Bargain can sacrifice Epicure as well, and our opponent knows the writing's on the wall and scoops it up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems quite promising. Double Anvil, and both Synthesizer and Harvester to enable them. Let's see what we're up against. Turn 1 Swamp. And I think Anvil is pretty well positioned against most of the mono-black decks out there, since they don't have answers to artifacts for the most part. So next turn I can play Epicure and a second Anvil, sack the blood token to make several 1-1s. One as your opponent plays an underdog. And then I can keep the second anvil available to chum block underdog perhaps, and then still sacrifice. Underdog attacks, and I think we'll do exactly that. Still have plenty of ways to generate artifacts, so I'm not afraid of my opponent killing the remaining construct. Alright, Trespasser is a good one. So, probably play Synthesizer, hoping to exile something useful. A land would be good. Voltage Surge also counts. So now I can play Kicked Voltage Surge, killing the Trespasser, which is the bigger long-term problem, perhaps. Or I can just kill an Underdog, play, let's say, an Epicure, and call it a day. Don't think I want to sacrifice Synthesizer now, because we could exile something we cannot cast. So, 
Yeah, not sure how much we care about Trespasser, since we're not relying on the graveyard too much, so maybe killing Underdog is good enough. Play another Epicure. And I'll just sacrifice a Construct to keep our Blood Token around. And pass. Hope to dodge a Shieldred at 4 mana. Their Shieldred. Do have a couple Harvesters which can try and take her out, so that's the reason to hang on to our Blood Tokens. So yeah, I could just play Double Harvester, hope there's no Meat Hook Massacre, and if one of them untaps we can kill Shieldred. And then for now, just sacrifice a Construct. And pass it back. Soren's fine. So we should be able to kill Shieldred here. Is and we'll probably have enough leftovers to pressure Soren. Liliana's not too powerful here on this board. So yeah, let's untap. I don't think I sack anything. So take out Shieldred. Could also kill Trespasser, or I could keep Harvester around for future Shieldreds, which may be a bigger concern, although I wouldn't be able to kill Surin if I don't kill Trespasser. So yeah, maybe killing Trespasser is still the play. Going face is also reasonable, but Sorin making life-linking vampires is pretty annoying. Possible I wanted to sacrifice Synthesizer first in case we found a removal spell that changed our play. But I'll do it now, since we haven't played a land yet either. Alright, so we'll play that. And pass. And future lands we can maybe discard to our blood tokens. They didn't have a Meat Hook Massacre last turn, so I'm guessing they don't have one now. Opponent trying to get back Shieldred. But they might be dead before uh, she takes over. Never mind. Midnight Sky, the play here. And our opponent concedes. They're gonna take seven, and then we can drain them twice more with Anvil. So then they're pretty close to dead. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got our Anvil, so I'm definitely keeping Epicure on one, can enable it, and then an Omnixilus could also help pressure the opponents. They are red-green. So we'll see if we want to prioritize Omnixilus or Fable. Opponents, maybe Junt Colors. Gets a forest for now. And I'll make a 1 1 token right away. And then next turn, yeah, Opnixels could be good while the opponent's not pressuring us. Alright. This could point towards a reanimator deck. Meetug Massacre can be pretty rough. Yeah, can just play Opnixels, sacrificing the 1 1, getting a replacement right away. Then we'll make a double and start plussing the other one. You work for me now, Runt. <laughs> Pleasure doing business with you. Now I have to be mindful of keeping an artifact in play, because the 1-1 one -one token's the last one we have, so I don't necessarily want to chump with it, since we need it to keep the anvil going. Solar Wind Grace is a nice one, especially with a fetch land in the graveyard. So that's going to provide a lot of value.
Conan passes. And a weather light is awesome. So we can play weather light or we can play fable. Got a feeling a lot of creatures are about to die, so I think I want to get the weather light going. And uh, can plus first. Opponent happy discarding lands since they can bring them back with Soul of Wind Grace. And this will get us a scry with Weatherlight to set up our future draw steps and braids is interesting. Um, sacrificing a creature's good since they probably won't be sacrificing theirs unless they get an insect token. Uh, sacking artifacts, they have blood tokens and uh, treasure tokens, they probably don't mind sacking. So, yeah, I think Braids is still fine overall. Can sacrifice Epicure. And it also plays well with our Weather Lights. So we'll pass. Might have to chum block with Epicure here instead. Soul of Wind Grace. Gets back another fetch line. That's gonna thin out their deck. And teachings also points towards a reanimator strategy. But for now, the uh, token factory fueling our weather light and braids will be a fine addition to that as well. Opponent goes digging. They could also draw with uh, Wind Grace. So I'm surprised they're still playing out their land. Means they might have a Titan of Industry in hand. Five, six, which they couldn't quite cast there. For now, I guess um, I could make another Devil. Just to have an extra blocker available since we're probably sacking a Devil end of turn. Or I can just sacrifice the 1-1 one, one instead of using Anvil. But then the problem is they could sacrifice an Artifact instead. Not sure how Braids interacts with something that's both an artifact and a creature. I guess we could do both, but uh, yeah, I'll make another Devil. Plus of Nixilis. Play Braids. Pleasure doing business with you. No attacks. And we'll sacrifice our construct. And our opponent can just sacrifice their blood token so we don't draw. Alright, so that's how Braids works out. So we might want to sacrifice our Devils if we want to be guaranteed an extra card. Now we can animate Weather Light at instant speed here if we sacrifice our construct. This will turn into a 5-5. Not enough to prevent Soul of Wind Grace from attacking, but good to keep in mind. So I can jump with a Devil, finish off the Insect. And we get to Scry. Bottom of land. And then now I could actually channel a Crucible since we control two legendaries. Sure, why not? Okay. Nixilis can maybe just plus both. Is my entertainment. Defy me. And then Weather Lights, and then we can send Braids and Weather Light. If they block with Rutstein, we can finish it off with a Devil Token. Keep Land in hand to discard to Fable. And 
And then I should use my anvil as well here. Another anvil I'll take. And end of turn, sank devil to braids. And they could just sacrifice Rudstein now. They might have another one in hand. But our opponent's also falling pretty low. So if we can dodge a Meat Hook Massacre, we're in business. And a Massacre would also kill Soul of Windgrace. Which is gonna start digging for action, discarding a land. And once again, they're out of lands in hand. Is it time for a Titan of Industry, perhaps? Nope. More cycling. And now they don't have mana for a Titan. Just a Jaya. That's okay. Fighting everything with fire burns all your bridges. I strive for elegance. Fable of the Mirrorbreaker, Warchief, and our opponent explodes, not able to find a sweeper in time. Sweet on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. I've got an anvil, so I'm tempted to keep, even though we don't have any black mana. Synthesizer can maybe help us with that. And an Epicure also provides a blood token we can sacrifice up against a red aggro deck. Okay, so we wouldn't mind finding some black mana soon to set up our Massacre eventually. Turn to Declares War. Gonna make an Ornithopter. So that's an interesting new addition here. Found black mana, so that's excellent. And uh, Anvil looks good. We'll make a 1-1. One, one. And our opponent's likely to kill it with a second chapter. Exiling our token in the process. And a play with fire kills Epicure, that's fine. Okay, could actually play Braids, although I don't have anything I necessarily want to sacrifice yet. So, could instead go with Synthesizer, and then hope we don't exile a 3-drop. Everything else would be fine. We exile the 3-drop. Okay, um, in that case... Could still sack Synthesizer to get one drop, or Epicure can make a blood token. And then we can use that instead. And then... I don't mind chumping with Epicure. Would prefer to keep our Construct around so that if we Meat Hook Massacre, we don't... Uh, Lose our enabler for Anvil. Raichu's kind of scary. So... I think I'd still chump. But it's gonna be tricky to kill their creatures with Massacre as they keep growing with Raichu. Underdog's a blocker. So I can sack Synthesizer to Anvil to make an extra blocker, play Underdog. And hope to pick up lands for Massacre, pretty much. All right, Harvester is good too. So as long as we can hold off the Thundering Raichu, we should be okay. Adversary with Kicker can replay Burn Spell. And Exile, probably the Underdog here. Although we can still double block Raichu, and then with a land, Massacre for 3 would be nice. So I think I'm probably forced to chump, keep our life total high. No land. So Massacre for 2 doesn't quite do it. So instead... Fable, make a 2-2, and then sack my blood token 
to make a 1-1 blocker and hope to get there next turn. Would prefer to keep my Shaman alive, because that's a guaranteed way of uh, making mana for Massacre, but if her opponent's got a Lightning Strike and I don't double chump, I'm dead. So that puts us in a tough spot. I think I'm forced to double chump. I also have to take one of my Springs if I draw a Mountain, so even a 2 damage burn spell would be enough. And I get to dig with my second chapter as well here. So, good chance we can find the land for Massacre. Discard Braids and Harvester. And there we go. So we'll be at 5, and then we'll gain some more life off Massacre. And our opponent's going to be working with one card in hand, plus their draw step. And Harvester will be able to kickstart the Anvil once again. And Harvester plus Reflections, pretty sweet too. Opponent passes. I think it's still worth it to activate, make a token. As opposed to saving our blood tokens in case we need to kill a larger creature with Harvester. But if I get to untap with Harvester, we're probably in pretty good shape anyway. Lightning Strike going face. Another reason to actively gain life with our Meat Hook Massacre. And yeah, we're at four, so double Lightning Strike was pretty scary there. But now we should be able to take over pretty quickly. And uh, yeah, copy Harvester seems fine. Make a Blood Token. Can attack with a team. Uh, could also sag the blood token to discard Ridge and maybe find something better. Alright, let's attack. And then I'll sack the 1 1 to gain some life 2 here. And we should be safe. Opponent's down to one. Possible there was a lethal line. But uh, yeah, I can't think of too many top decks that saved them. So very close game here against Monorant. On to the next one. We're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Got some early interaction. Turn two underdog. Would love to sacrifice it to Obnixilis and get a ton of extra loyalty with Casualty. And we'll hang on to Synthesizer until later to maybe hit our land drop with it. Opponent also black-red. Don't expect Underdog to stick around here. And then hopefully draw lands. If not, maybe play Synthesizer. Opponent's got their own Underdog. And we get to untap and play an Obnixilis. Don't think I should try and attack first and get cute. Although I could. Let's just do this now. And then I'm just going to make two devils to start out. Shake down the load. Which can trade for underdog. You work for me now, runt. And then we've got two planeswalkers to leverage. Meeting Massacre for one. Still allows us to kill underdog here. So not too bad. The only drawback of Synthesizer is if we exile a 3 mana red card, or I guess any red card really. So I probably want to wait on Synthesizer if I can, which means maybe Fable is our next best option. And uh, we'll start plussing. Go ahead. Plead for mercy. 
Now, I guess the alternative is Braids keep up Voltage Surge to maybe kill a Blitzed Underdog, so we can protect our Planeswalkers a bit better. All of them also fine trading the Fable token for Underdog. So I think I want to get this going. Invoke Despair is pretty good. Kills Creature Enchantment and Planeswalker. And I want to keep the token Planeswalker, so we'll sacrifice the legendary one. Okay. So yeah, that was a clean answer to most of our board. But at least that's one Invoke Despair down and they didn't get to draw any cards. So now I could play Synthesizer and cast pretty much whatever we exile with it. Including Bargain, which will just sack Synthesizer before playing a land. Seems okay. And Harvester is nice. And then I want to plus one more time before making a Devil. Go ahead. Keep our Planeswalker us. around. Another Invoke Despair, okay. That's two Invoke Despairs down. And another Fable. So can play Fable and Braids if I'd like. Might be overextending a bit into a Meat Hook Massacre is the only concern, but I think that's fine. And then I can sack the Blood Token to draw with Braids right away. And Anvil's excellent, okay. Found our engine card. Opponent revealing blue mana as well. Grasp kills Braids. And Sorin we can handle. Okay, what do we want to discard? Spring? Everything else seems fine. So I can play Anvil and then use Voltage Surge after attacking with our Shaman to make a treasure to kill the Vampire and kill Sorin, and then we'll get a 1-1 as well. I wouldn't be able to play Epicure alongside it. If I play a land I can also Blitz Underdog, which is probably worth it at this point. So I'll go full control just in case. Shaman at Sorin, Underdog, face. And then wait for the treasure to kick Voltage Surge. And make a 1-1. One, one. And get to draw of turn. And now we've got our Anvil as a nice damage engine. A couple more card draw engines in hand. Bankbuster. That's manageable. They could Blitz Underdog, but they're gonna hang on to whatever they have in hand. Maybe gonna draw with the Bankbuster since they don't want to lose life to Blitz. So let's untap. And then Synthesizer. Plus maybe a Blitzed Underdog. Still leaves up Bargain. But let's see what we exile first. Another Anvil, perfect. So yeah, I don't mind blitzing Underdog here. And then with a Treasure we'll still have Bargain available, if necessary. March to deal with Underdog. Alright, sadly don't have the Treasure to cast Bargain, sacking Underdog now. That's okay. Our opponent still has mana to activate Bankbuster. And another Synthesizer, but we've already played Land for the turn, so I don't think I'll be using it, but I do want to make some more 1-1s. One Their Massacre is definitely keeping them in the game. 
could find our own copy at some point. Bankbuster draws. And another one. Don't think I need to cast Bargain here. <laughs> another Bankbuster, okay. They've got their card draw taken care of. Let's untap. And then, let's say I Blitz Underdog, copy it with a Reflection. That should get us pretty close to lethal. Especially with the extra damage from Epicure. So let's attack. Opponent is at 2. So activate Anvil. Sacking a non creature so Meat Hook Massacre doesn't trigger. And then Epicure is one more. Alright, awesome. Grindy game against Grixis Control, beating double Invoke Despair, which was quite effective, but Anvil gets it done. Alright, so we got to see our red black sacrifice deck in action, and it seems like a well positioned deck if you're facing a lot of mono black, just because mono black doesn't really have answers to artifacts, and our main engine cards are artifacts, with Anvil being the main one. So it seems like a pretty decent deck at the moment, and the deck got a few new additions in Dominaria United between Weatherlight Completed, which performed quite well, and Braids also seems tailor-made for a strategy like this, and it also didn't lose too much in rotation, Deadly Dispute downgraded to Reckoner's Bargain, but for the most part we still have all the same cards to work with. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.